One of the world's first true smartphone brands, BlackBerry, may be officially dead. The brand that appeared all the way back in 1999 and became nearly an instant success. It featured a physical query style keyboard, the, the ability to send and receive emails, strong security, a long battery life, and more. The brand saw a lot of early success and was one of the biggest names in cell phones in the mid-2000s. But in 2007, the first iPhone was released, and in the coming years, BlackBerry phones saw a dramatic decline in sales. Over the next 10 years, they tried to redesign themselves to stay relevant, but it just didn't work. Last week, the last manufacturing rights to the brand expired with no current talks of continuation. Many people will fondly remember using a BlackBerry as their first smartphone experience. Last week was the end of the line for Sky Harbor Terminal 2. It completely closed last Wednesday after almost 60 years of service. The famous Five Seas of Arizona's mural for Terminal 2 will be moved to the rental car area by next year. When Terminal 2 was finished back in 1962 for a total cost of $2.7 million, it had 19 gates. Over time, renovations to Terminal have helped to keep, looking it, to keep it looking modern. There is no word yet on what will take its place once it is demolished, but Sky Harbor says that it will be beneficial to travelers. Now let's go over to Mr. Dobish with a weekly update. <laughs> Uh, good morning, Ruth Fisher Colts. It is another week, and we are at just beyond mid-quarter. So first reminder I want you to listen to is about your grades and your efforts. So the biggest thing you got to do is make sure, you're, A, you're here every day. When you're here, you're doing your best, uh, turning in your work, asking questions, and getting help from your teachers. Uh, so your teachers are going to try some new things to make sure you guys are getting your work done and helping you out, uh, trying some new things during RTI. Uh, but again, if, if you have questions, the biggest thing you do is advocate for yourself, uh, talk with your teacher and ask questions. You're not the only one that has those questions. Uh, the other side of that too is it is springtime. It's getting a little warmer. Uh, so make sure uh, you're still appropriate for dress code as things start warming up. Your parents start looking for uh, new clothes for the spring. Make sure shorts and things like that will follow the dress code and shirts and things like that. Uh, so if you need to review that, it's in the handbook. Uh, take a look at it. Uh, also remember, we're looking for students displaying positive behaviors. You're getting little cult tickets. Make sure you get those turned in uh, into the cafeteria so we can draw your name and recognize you for all the great things that are going on campus for behaviors. Uh, my last little word of advice is this week is we're doing a little spirit week. So uh, today, if you're dressed up, you should be wearing your favorite cartoon character. So hopefully I'm going to see a bunch of Spongebobs around today. Uh, Wednesday is going to be twin day, so dress as a twin. Uh, we'll see how many people dress up as me because I'm that awesome. Uh, also, on Thursday, it is Decades Day, so the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Uh, so, if you don't know what they are, Google what people wore in the 70s. All I have is like bell bottoms and I don't own any of those. 80s, uh, probably fluorescent colors, like bright and holy pants. Um, not just for Sundays. Uh, and then the 90s is the greatest decade ever. I'm sure I could just look in my closet and find clothes I probably should have thrown away. Oh wait, they don't fit anymore, so eh. And then Friday is show your love, wear pink, red, and white. So uh, looking forward to those days and trying to find what I can wear for those days also. Hope you'll be dressing up for those school spirit things. Uh, so with that, make it a great week and we'll see you around campus. Thank you, Mr. Dobash. Here's Jeremy with sports. Hello, welcome back to Sports. My name is Jeremy. In NFL news, Super Bowl 54 ended with a shocking fourth quarter. The 49ers were up to 20 to 10 with, how, with about 11 minutes to go in the game, and ended up losing 31 to 20. Maybe it should not have ended, not not have been much a surprise, because it so closely mirrored the way that the Chiefs won their other two playoffs game this year. Congratulations to the Kansas City Chiefs on the big win. In NBA news, the Suns have been steadily dropping in the standings over the past couple of weeks. After losing to the Brooklyn Nets last week, 119-97, they'll find themselves in 12th place in the West. The Coyotes got back their winning ways last week with a 3-0 win 
over the Oilers. They are trying to avoid being out of the playoffs for the eighth consecutive year. They have lost eight of their last ten games and are currently 27, 21, and 7. That is all for sports. See you next time. Bye. Thanks, Jeremy. Here's Tyler and Thomas with Entertainment News. Welcome to Entertainment News. My name is Thomas. And I'm Tyler. 2020 is looking like it's going to be a busy year in Phoenix concert scene. From classic rock to big Mar names, we will be seeing more than our fair share of music this year. Classic groups like Foreigner, Tony Bennett, and Sammy Hagar, country acts like Jason Aldean and Chris Stapleton, bands from 90s like Matchbox 20 Pearl, and Pearl Jam, and today's biggest names like Halsey, Kesha, and the Lumineers will be stopping by. Tickets range in price depending on deba- demand and location for each show. That is all for entertainment news. See you next time. Thanks, guys. Let's go over to Ryan and Kurt with Joke of the Week. Hello. Welcome to Joke of the Week. My name is Kurt. And I'm Ryan. Why are astronomers good at organizing a birthday party? I don't know. Why are they so good at organizing a birthday party? Because they know how to plan it. Great (laughs) joke. Here on Joke of the Week, we want to hear your joke. If you have a joke and would like to be on the news, go to the link below. See you next time. Thanks, guys. Now it's time for Fun Fact Trivia with Eliana. Welcome to Fun Fact Trivia. My name is Eliana. February 11th is National Inventors Day. It is a day that we get to celebrate the likes of the Wright Brothers, Thomas Edison, George Washington Carver, and Alicia Otis. Thank you. To inventors, we can safely ride an elevator, have a well-lit room at the flip of a switch, speak to someone on the other side of the world, or efficiently pump lotion from a bottle. Many inventors go their whole life without recognition for their creation, while others are household names. Nearly everything around us is the result of someone tinkering in their garage, laboratory, or basement trying to find a solution to a problem. Your question today is, which famous inventor's birthday was designated for National Inventor's Day starting 1983? Is it A, Thomas Edison, B, Alexander Graham Bell, or C, Samuel Morse? You have 10 seconds to decide which one is correct. You said A, Thomas Edison, you are correct. He had more than 1,000 patents to his name by the time of his death. That's all for Fun Fact Trivia. See you next time. Thanks, Eliana. Toby and Chris are here with Science Time. Welcome to Science Time. My name is Toby. And my name is Chris. Archaeologists have discovered a 7,000-year-old Neolithic wall in Eastern Europe, which they believe is the old wooden wooden structure in the world. The square well was built with an oak by farmers around 5,256 BCE. According to researchers who have pinpointed its origin after analyzing the tree rings in the wood, which is the scientific method known as dendro chronology. The wall's age makes it the oldest dated archaeological wooden construction worldwide, according to researchers in the Czech Republic. the well was only preserved because it had been underwater for, for centuries. Now we cannot let it dry out or the, the well would be destroyed, said Carl Bayer, who is in charge of the restoration site in the press release. Researchers are developing a process to dry the wood and preserve it without deforming, using sugar to reinforce the wood's cellular structure. That is all for science time. See you next time. Bye. Thanks, guys. Let's go over to Michael with Word of the Week. Welcome to Word of the Week. My name is Michael. This week's word is composite. Composite can be a verb, noun, or adjective. Today we will be talking about it in its adjective form. Composite means made up of various parts or elements. Here is how you can use it in a sentence. Many construction materials are composite items that allow for extra strength and durability. See you next time on Word of the Week. Thanks, Michael. Here's Danny with This Week in History. Mandela was born on July 18, 1918 in a village of Mazoma in Mtada, which was part of South 
Africa's Cape Province, Nelson Mandela became a leader in the African National Congress. He pushed hard for the Congress and the protesters to follow Gandhi's nonviolence approach. He was classified as a terrorist by the South African government and sent to prison. After being released from prison, he served as the president of South Africa from 1994 to 1999. He was the country's first black head of state and the first elected in a fully representative democratic election. His government focused on dismantling the legacy of apartheid by tackling institutionalized racism and fostering racial rec recollection. That is all for this week in history. See you next His time. His government focused on dismantling the legacy of apartheid by tackling institutionalized racism and fostering racial reconciliation. That's all for this week in history. See you next Thanks, time. Thanks, Danny. Now for a few announcements. Here on the news, we are looking for students to tell their jokes and show off special hidden talents. If you have something you'd like to share, please go to smuc.me forward slash be on the news. Odyssey of the Mind will be selling treats on Wednesday. Vex will be selling chips and candy on Thursday. And good luck to the girls' basketball and football and, oh, sorry. The girls' football. Good luck to girls' basketball and flag football teams as they play their games this week. And remember, the Ruth Fisher Colts store opens back up this week. Catalogs will be available in the front office. Student Council is hosting a sweetheart's dance on February 21st from 4 to 6. Please make sure you grab a permission slip today and return it to your homeroom teacher by Wednesday, February 19th. This week is Spirit Week. We Here are the daily themes. On Tuesday, favorite cartoon. Wednesday, twin day. Thursday, decade day. 70s, 80s, 90s. And Friday, yay. Show your love, wear pink, red, and white. That's all for your Ruth Fisher News. See you next time. Go! Go!